No, all right, hey guys. Good afternoon. It is, well, me, Coach Free Love, here your host of Firestorm at Home. Today, it's another parkour episode. It's actually episode number four for us. Uh, we are going to be working primarily on two different sections of our curriculum, some of our floor stuff and our vaulting stuff. So it'll be a floor day and a vault day, but technically it's gonna be a lot of floor stuff because, well, we really don't often have a bunch of obstacles in our living room, and this is really what we can use that we have. So we're, we're gonna get started with just like any other episode, making sure that we have space in our living room first. If you need to work together to move things out of the way, move the stuff out of the way, make the room that you're gonna need today for our whole lesson, you're probably gonna want, if you can make it happen, at least 10 feet of space. That's if you lay down from head to toes and then done without that, and then you lay down a second time, we're gonna want about that much straight, clear space. So if we can get up to 10 feet of space, that's great. But if we can't, that's okay. Either way, we're gonna go ahead Take a strong postured stance with the space that we have. Take a nice deep breath in through our nose, out through our mouth. We're gonna do that two more times. In, out, in, and out. Nice, good job everyone. Take that strong stance, keep that strong stance, keep your posture up. We're gonna take our chin over to our shoulder, roll it down our chest, up to our opposite shoulder. We're gonna go back and forth. We're gonna do this movement several times, making sure that we try and keep a tight connection between our chin and our shoulder and chest. Nice job, everyone. Come back down to center. Curl, lift ourselves up. Nice deep breath in and out. We're gonna start with our shoulders now. Lifting into a full shrug. This means that we're lifting not just our shoulder, but our whole shoulder blade as well, trying to lift as much of the, the socket that our shoulder sits in. So we're lifting both parts of that shoulder. Lifting up as much as we can, even bending our arms a little bit to help to aid in that lift. We're going to circle forwards, then down, then back behind us by pinching our shoulder blades. We're gonna do this forward shoulder shrug just a few times. Lifting all the way up, almost like your shoulders are brushing your earlobes. There may be a moment today where I slow down or I stop doing the movement, but I would like for you to keep doing the movement so I can give you all the explanation that you may need. Sometimes it's hard for me to do both the thing and the teaching. So please keep that in mind. We're gonna switch to our backward shoulder shrugs now. Big lift up, big circle back behind us, doing a full shrug all the way around, squeezing, making sure we maintain our posture we don't slouch, we don't fall over, keeping our chest up, big backward shrugs. Nice job. Keeping ourselves nice and strong, keeping that posture up, we're gonna go ahead and move into our arms. Start with a few backwards arm circles, keeping them fairly small. Let's switch it up and let's go forwards arm circles. Nice. Again, keeping them about that same size as our previous circles. And now we're going to go forward slightly bigger. Nice job. And we're going to go backwards, same size. I like to call this a washing machine technique where we're going forwards and backwards instead of how we would have done these in a previous episode. Stop. Mixing it up is a really good part of mobility, but making sure we still use all of our joints is more important. So, we're gonna go to our elbows and then our wrists, going to that big strong T pose position. We're gonna take our hands up, straight up over our elbows. Hands will come straight down into our shoulders. Leave your elbows up and in place. Hands will come down and under those elbows, and your hands are gonna come out to the outside of those elbows. And there will be a little bit of turn that happens in our hand as we do this movement, so try and keep that in mind. 
We're gonna keep that extension, keep the lift, and lateral arm circle in over the top towards our head. Trying to keep those elbows again in a lift. Going from that lateral arm circle out to our reach, let's go in and under our arm, up towards chin, pushing out to the outside walls. We're gonna go on ahead and keep that going. Big circles all the way out. Nice job, everyone. All right, cool. So, we're going to take the mobility from our arms and shoulders and start moving our torso a little bit. We're gonna do our twist and hold. So it's gonna be important that when you guys twist all the way around, that you get to the maximum of your ability to twist. So I'm gonna look back behind me and I'm gonna look all the way around as far over as I can this way. Holding it for three, two, one, and then twisting back my opposite direction. When I get to the end of my twist, I'm gonna get to my maximum of my twist and my potential all the way over this way. And three, two, one, and I'm gonna twist all the way back. Nice, we're gonna do that once more on either side. So twist, squeeze all of your abdominal muscles, use your back, use your erector, that's that big roof of muscles along your spine. Use it to twist for three, two, one. Nice, and we're gonna twist back. Abdomen, obliques, and here, our erector. <laughs> big, big twist. Three, two, one. Twisting back, woo. All right, we're gonna do our momentum twist. That's our muscle twist we just did. Now our momentum twist, we're gonna use our arms and we're gonna pull ourselves into our twist, going back and forth with a slightly uh, more aggressive pull at the end of that, trying to squeeze and push ourselves a little further without the momentum. We couldn't get as far, but now we can pull into it, right? So look and pull. And this is usually where people feel all those pops and clicks in their back. Don't forget, Keep looking the direction you're pulling, right? Awesome, nice. Now, we've done those in a bunch of our previous episodes. What we're gonna be doing in every episode is a lot of the same stuff for our mobility. So, the more you familiarize yourself with it, the better and the easier it will be for you. Now, we're gonna go from our spine, from our upper torso, down into our lower torso, into our hips. As well, we're gonna do our hip circle our pelvic tilts, our hoopa hoopas, whatever you want to call it, hula hoops. We're going to make sure that we try and isolate as much of our spine as possible, trying not to move our body as much as possible. A little bit of movement will occur. It's bound to happen. But we're going to really focus on isolating or freezing and stopping all of this movement here and keeping that movement in our hips, in our pelvis. Don't forget, you should be doing cyclic breathing. So we're breathing in through our nose and out through our mouth. Let's go to our opposite direction. Good hip curl all the way around, really tilting the pelvis in every direction as best as we can. Full tilt. Curl all the way around. And bring it to a stop. Bringing our feet and our knees together now. We're gonna do a nice squat down, about a quarter of the way or halfway down. We're going to then circle our knees, bring our knee circles, making our knees go around the front side of our toe, off to the side, back behind our toes. Almost as if we're looking at that circle from the top down. Some of those pops and clicks that you may be hearing are my knees. I thought those but were your shoes. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Some of those pops and clicks are also my shoes. That is correct. Nice. Good. 
we're going to go on ahead and we're going to alternate which leg that we push our weight through. We're pumping our legs, just slightly pumping our heels into the ground. Almost like we're running in place, but our toes don't come up. Again, alternating which leg goes, pushing that heel, pushing, locking that heel into the ground, alternating, locking the opposite heel into the ground. Lock it out, lock it out, and step into a small lunge. Boom. One foot out in front, weight inside the front foot, roll the ankle and the heel out, making sure that we get a nice big, big roll in there. While we're here, we're gonna go ahead, roll out our wrists, squeeze very tightly, roll the wrist in one direction. Try and match the direction you're rolling with your ankle and your wrists together. Let's go opposite for both. Making sure to, again, keep breathing in the nose and out the mouth. Let's go ahead and switch legs now. Putting our opposite foot out in front. I was using my left, now I'm using my right. Putting my weight in there, lifting my heel up off the ground, and let's go counterclockwise to start for our ankle circles. And if you would like to, continue rolling out your wrist. It's important to make sure that we keep ourselves mobile, right? Especially if we're all at home, we're all stuck at home, we're not getting a chance to go outside and play or do what we would normally do. Opposite direction for your ankle roll and your wrist roll. In these moments where we're kind of stuck, the little things that you can do to make sure that your joints don't get too rusted in place, like the Tin Man in The Wizard of Oz, if you've been in that one position watching TV all day, or playing on your computer, you get stuck. And it's important to get up and keep mobilizing yourself. So our whole body has been mobilized, and now we're gonna get some blood really pumping through all those muscles. We're gonna start with a light jog. And I would like for you guys, again, if I stop my workout so that I can give you a little bit of explanation, I would like for you guys to continue moving through my workouts. Right now, breathing in our nose and out our mouth, maintaining a nice pace. This means a consistent movement speed. I'm not going faster and slowing down. Maintaining a nice pace is gonna be super critical for a lot of you guys' later parkour skill application. We're not stuck inside, we're allowed to go outside. Then we're gonna to need to know how to pace ourselves from one movement to the next movement so that we can continue to do lines. Running lines is really what parkour is about. At least, that's where it gets to. So, we're gonna go on ahead, adjust our mat if we need to. Fine, a little bit of sliding. We're gonna stop with our running in place. We're gonna start with some lunges. Now, we're gonna do our lunges in place using the length of our mat. If you're sharing space with your siblings, Slide apart and offset one another. Take your time. Make room for everybody in the family. We're gonna go into this nice forward lunge here. Chest is up and arms are up. We're gonna make sure that we keep our arms engaged and from here we're going to dip down and lift back up. Using some of our previous skill now as a warm up to really get that blood flowing. We did these in our previous episode that we spoke about handstands and lunge to teeter totter and so for those of you that have watched previous episodes this may seem familiar there will be a few items that happened in today's episode that will seem familiar and that's because well many of the movements that we do are locked into each other I hope you guys have all kept your arms up while I talked and tried to explain some of this connection that we have going on keep those arms up Keep those lunges in. Woo! All right, we're gonna go ahead and switch to our opposite leg now. I've just simply turned facing the other direction, keeping those arms up. We're gonna do 12 on this side here. So lean and lunge, come back up, lean and lunge, come back up. We should feel this working out our quad. That's the top of our thigh. We should also feel this in the underside of our thigh. This uh, this muscle group under here is our hamstring, right? 
We'll fill that down there. We can lean forward. You push back against it. Feel it in your quad on the lean. Feel it in your hamstring a little bit too on that push. All right, keeping ourselves going nice and strong. Pretty sure that's like 15 instead of 12. It's okay. Now, we're gonna go on ahead and stop with the lunges. We're gonna get back into a light jog. Getting ourselves going. Now our legs probably feel a little bit lighter. Our whole body probably feels a little bit lighter. Stuff like this, the explosive and plyometric movement where we're running or jumping, we're usually able to do that a little bit more or more effectively than static or slow movement. Stuff where we're holding, right? So, go ahead and slow the jog down. We're gonna take a stop here. Use this as an opportunity to get a quick drink of water. If you've not yet done so, go fill up your water bottle. Go grab one of the like dozens and dozens of water bottles that are in some people's stockade. Grab one, get some water, it's good. All right. Woo! Boy, I love my water. I hold it like I'm Coach Nick Stone. No, set your water down, loving it as much as you do. We're gonna leave it behind while we get obstacle. We don't even need to have a lot of space to do our precision jump. It's just preferred. So if you have the opportunity to find something small or flat and low down, that you can jump over, it's always good to have an obstacle to keep in mind. I'm gonna take this. This is my book, or my couch, or my uh, little sibling's toy. I'm not gonna land on it, because it'd be a terrible, terrible time. Breaking that stuff would be bad. But what I am going to do is jump over it, right? So our precision jump requires that we have a couple key things. That's a good, solid arm swing. The ability to use our arm swing in the right direction. Not swinging my arms out, I'm swinging my arms up, right? Now the other thing is going to be a solid squat. If I can't squat, if I don't know how to squat, if I've never done a squat before, crazy. You watched a couple of episodes before this one, you all have the ability to squat. Now we gotta time our arm swing and our squat together my arms swing down as I squat down. My arms are going to swing up as I jump up. If I leave my legs out and I do my jump, I'm going to catch my toes. I'm going to trip. I'm going to fall. I'm not going to be as effective as I can be. So, my precision jump is arms up, squat down, swing down, swing up, jump up, reach my feet out land on my toes, keeping my feet together. You guys can see I'm jumping over my mat. It's not a super big jump. Your mat sometimes is longer than you. If you're a short person or a tall person, it's going to be different. And for you to get this skill signed off, you need to be able to jump at least your own body height. So if I lay down, I can see that this, from my toes to my head, where my hat is, that is about the size that I would need to do to make my precision jump. So I'm gonna slide over and now I'm gonna start targeting, start practicing this side of this gap. Okay, arm swing down, squat jump. When I land, I stay in my squat, stay nice and low, keep my feet together. Staying in my squat, keeping my arms out helps me to maintain my balance. Alright, so, we're going to practice our precision jump. If we're in a constrained space, we don't have a whole lot of room. Our siblings, we have to share sometimes, right? We'll have to take turns. When you get to the end of your precision jump here, we're going to stick that landing, step out of the way, let our siblings do their jump if we're sharing. If we're not sharing, if we're offset or staggered, just make sure that you guys are jumping the same direction at the same time, right? Staying on your toes, 
keeping your heels up, your hips down, and your chest up are a very important part of your precision jump. Now, we're gonna take that skill, we're gonna use it for our workout. We're gonna actually use a slightly more advanced version of it for our workout. Get rid of your obstacle. You're gonna need your mat. Today, one of our first workouts, it's not our warm up, it's not our mobility. We're gonna be doing tough jumps. This is to help us in replicating our precision up. If I have something like this elevated surface, I needed to precision jump up onto it, I would need to have a tuck jump. So today's workout, taking the center space in our mat, being careful, we're going to do a combination of our tuck jump and our drop absorb. So this means we're going to jump all the way up, pull our knees into our chest, we're going to hold our tuck, and as we start falling to the ground, we're actually going to go all the way to the bottom, hands down. So starting with my hands here. Nice and ready, up. Now I'm squatting and swinging down like I would for my precision jump. I'm gonna jump up in place. I'm going to bring my knees into my chest. If you want extra challenge, grab your legs. If you want even more challenge, try and keep your hands on the front of your tuck. We're gonna do this arm swing and this jump in this tuck. When we land, we're gonna land almost like a frog trying to keep our arms inside of our knees and our hands, right? So the whole movement for our tuck jump, the way we're doing it for skill practice and workout combined, is going to look like this. Get out of here, Pat. I don't need it. Thanks. So that's just one. Keeping ourselves strong, centered in our mat, arms are ready. We're going to do this another nine times. So ten of these tuck jumps in total. So squat and arm swing, jump. Come all the way down. If we need to, we can go ahead and put our hands down, but keeping our absorb nice and low when we land, building a good strong habit of staying low, it's easier to balance down there than it is to balance up here. So, starting over, starting again, nice arm swing and squat, jump, tuck, drop absorb as necessary, stay low. You guys can see I put my hands down very softly at the end of the movement because I almost don't need them. But if I were falling forward, I would. So if you're out of balance a little doing these, hands catch. So, starting again, four. Nice, arm swing and squat. Jump and tuck, finish up. Number five, arm swing and squat. Ooh, and you can see now why the jump is important. Getting those feet up, it's almost like we're jumping up onto our own hands, precisioning up onto a block that we're making. Again, starting arms up, down, up and into our squat, staying low, keeping our feet together is a super important part of the movement as a whole. We're going to continue it. As you can see, I am moving forward a little at each jump, resetting myself. It's important to take time, assess your space, readjust and be considerate of your space. Woo! All right, I think that's eight. We're looking at two more. Tall and strong, down, up. And one last one. Woo! Nice. So, that start of that movement, where we have to aggressively, explosively, pull our knees up into that near tuck position. That is for our precision up as a skill. That landing, where we come down super low, keeping our feet together, squatting, widening out a little bit, hands ready. That's more like our drop absorb and our drop precision. Now if I had hands down, it's because I had space to save and drop and catch myself. Or it was too big to handle just my legs and I had to catch myself with my arms as well. It being whatever the size of the jump I was doing. So each will have its own place in your practice that will be determined by the environment, by your actual training. So practicing these workouts at home is a great way that you can sharpen those skills 
for later use. If you guys are feeling a little bit of burn, that's good. We're just getting started. So we talked about our precision jump and our precision up. Now we're going to talk about our strides. So our strides are more like a one-legged balance. And in a small space, we don't have much room to do our strides. So we're going to considerately use our mat. Starting in a precision position, I'll be stepping out onto one foot, then really exaggerating my next jump by swinging, powerfully swinging my opposite knee. I'm stepping out onto my left and powerfully, powerful, powerfully swinging my right knee. Coming up into a near tuck jump, then landing on both feet on the other side. So, one, two, three. That takeoff, where I left from that one leg, from my left leg for that previous example, going out onto my left, I'm jumping, swinging that knee. That's a stride takeoff. Often, strides are done across a long space and in great succession, where we stride many, many times in a row to cover, again, great space or great distances. We're gonna practice, well, building up the muscle that we're gonna need for our strides by doing a quick workout. We're gonna start in a lunge, just like this. We're gonna have our arms up as we need to, our arms out for balance if we need to. We're then gonna practice taking the back knee, driving it up in front of us, and finishing that movement, we will jump off of our planted front foot. So, some of you maybe caught an episode before where we talked about handstands, lunges, teeter-totters and all. We did a single leg jumping lunge with a knee rise or a knee swing. That's what we're going to do right now. So, we're going to take that strong lunge position, keep the arms up ready for balance. We're going to knee swing and jump and come back down. Now, that jump doesn't have to be big, but that knee swing should be. So, emphasize, and I want you guys to keep going, emphasize the swing on your knee. We're going to do this for another 20 seconds or so. Getting a big knee swing, coming back up, out and into our lunge, up, up, into our lunge, up, back out, keeping yourself in our mat, mindful of our space, mindful of our family, and of our environment being, well, all of their wonderful possessions. So, don't break anything. Don't break yourself, yourself included. Big knee swings, big knee drive, up. All the way up, as high as you can get it. Go ahead and drop. Woo! Coach, coach. Ah, oh, the one leg hurts. Good. Switch, time for the opposite leg. We're gonna get started right away. Hit that lunge on your mat. Big knee swing, up, jump. We're gonna do this for 30 seconds, right? This should be about 30 jumps. Because it takes you nearly one whole second to get that knee all the way up into that full swing. And to get that jump. And to time those together, it's not one, then two. It is a big movement together. You're going to want to keep that strong. Recenter yourself as you need to. Start again. That's just about 30 seconds. Okay, go ahead and stop. Catch your breath. Don't slouch. This is terrible for you. Pick yourself up, adjust yourself, chest up, chin up, deep breath in, your nose out, your mouth. That's right, you guys got it. I've said it a bunch of times at this point. We're on episode four, you've watched some of those previous episodes. So, Use your cyclic breathing. Use those previous episodes of knowledge. We're gonna apply some of that today. So, if you guys are ready, we're gonna do our strides. Again, exaggerating now that skill, and that knee swing and that knee drive. We're gonna start our feet together. Strong precision takeoff. Then, middle of the air, I will separate my legs Landing on one leg, strike. I'll start with my left strike. And when I get to the end, I'll finish on both feet in a precision land. So, here we go. And that's why I said you want almost 10 feet of space earlier today. Now, 
if you guys realize how big that jump is, you need 30 seconds to relocate, go on ahead and do so right now. We're gonna do that 10 times on each leg. So I just did a left stride. So now, on my return trip, turning around, staying in the same space, I'm gonna start precision jump and go right stride. Trying to control yourself, try not to accidentally shoot into obstacles that are around you. If you realize this was too small a space, or that you need a little more and you can make it, do so. Coach, coach, I don't have that much space. Okay, I understand. Using just our mat, practice that jump and that leg separation. And you can see, I'm even exaggerating how one leg cuts back during that stride. When I come out, it's almost like I'm leaving one leg behind. But that's because this knee comes from way back here now. Boom! Has so much room for the knee swing. So, doing those strides, continuing. Again, it should be 10 on each leg. You guys will say are probably around five left. I'm doing number five on your right. We'll start number six on our left. And number six on our right. Making sure that we exaggerate that knee swing and control at the end. That's number seven on my left and number seven on my right. Again, big knee swing. Woo! Such powerful knee swing on the leg that's not striding. That's number eight, starting now. And number eight. Now, coach, coach, what should I do with my arms? Keep them up. It's a very important thing. I'm gonna swing them up. When I separate from my stride, my legs and my arm will come back a little, but they will still stay up. And I will use them to pump a second time. So, precision, swing. And I'm using that pump by real little in this constrained space, but in big moves, it's a much bigger pump. All right, last one on either side. Practicing those strides. Woo! All right, so we talked about quite a few things and just got quite a bit of a leg workout in. So if you're like, coach, coach, I need a quick water break. We understand. So do I, as your coach. I'm gonna have to hydrate, or else I would die. Mostly water anyway, so get your water. And I'll get mine. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, so nice, so refreshing. Love it, I love it. You guys notice, I'm using my cool metal reusable bottle. Gotta get out of there, get out of those one-time use plastics. There's everyone's PSA for the day. One-time use plastics are bad, no way. <laughs> okay, all right. We're gonna talk about our bolts. The first half of class today was like all floor skills. Between it being precision jumps and strides, also our precision jump and our uh, like tough jump workout, but our, our lunge and our knee swing workout, like so much legs. We're gonna switch over to doing some vault stuff. Now this is vaults with a couch. If you guys have a couch, great, awesome. If you don't have a couch, if you have like a chair, or maybe a very strong countertop or coffee table, we are not vaulting up and over that obstacle. We're not gonna go up and over anything actually. We're just gonna be practicing a drill that will help us with how to do these two skills, being our simple vault and our speed vault. 
how to use the end of my couch, my ottoman, right? It's leg piece. If you guys have one that can separate from the couch, great, pull it away. Honestly, you don't want to accidentally kick anybody. If someone's using the couch right here, and you have the opportunity to use the space to the side of the couch, possibly using the armrest, then do so. But if you do not have permission to use any of that space, you guys are gonna have to improvise. You'll have to just use the floor. And this, this just using the floor is gonna be the hardest, most challenging thing. So, if we can, we can use something cushy, soft, and elevated. And if we can't, we're gonna have to respect the environment we're in and use the floor for our workout today. We're gonna to be practicing by doing a jump and a donkey kick. A donkey kick is actually a trampoline skill that we use often, and that's where our hands are down, and our knees go up and our feet kick back. I'm trying not to accidentally kick anything. If you've got something you need to move, move it. Again, donkey kick, right? Pushing my feet out. We're gonna be doing a variation of our donkey kick where we're going sideways. So for those of you that are practicing our simple vault, that's gonna be two hands on this small extended part of the couch. And we're gonna jump and kick our legs out sideways and then pull our feet back under us. Our goal is to get our feet up to the height of our chest, if we can. That's not our chest while we're standing, but that's our chest wherever we're reaching and are posted and holding ourselves over. We talked about being posted, having your arm posted in one of our previous episodes. So keep those episodes in mind as we're doing this movement. You're gonna stay posted over that arm, over that hand, on that elevated space, or on the floor, if we're on the floor. We're gonna jump, bring those knees up and kick those feet out, and then bring those knees back in. Doing this five times, on your right side, then five times on our left. Man, boy, I wish I had a couch to do that on, but unfortunately, I got no permission from my parents. I was not allowed to use that piece of equipment. But they said, you can use the chair in the dining room. So I came and I brought it over to use the chair in the dining room so I could do my opposite side. That works sometimes. Sometimes it does not. And we still have the ground. Woo! All right. So that's two hands to post on the side, practicing our simple vault. It's a drill that's going to practice what you would need for your simple vault. For your speed vault, or, well, for anybody that's looking to advance themselves, we're going to be doing that drill with just the one hand. Now, doing it on the floor, super challenging. You have no time, no room. You're extending your body out and then curling it back in. It's way harder to do than if you are having an elevated surface. So if you want to challenge yourself, do this movement on the floor. Because I'm using my one arm, I will not be doing this on the floor. I'm trying to keep myself safe and train at my own pace. And that's considerate for you to do for yourself. So I'm going to be keeping myself posted on the one arm, using my opposite arm for balance. And I'm going to do another five donkey kicks on each side. So planted, posted, ready, and kick, try and pull those feet back in. Try and keep your knees and your feet together the whole time. Again, ready, kick, back in, up, back in, up, and back in. Control, balance, readjust, one more. Cool. Woo. That's my right side. I'm gonna make some furniture adjustments. And I'm gonna do my left side. Five on my left, making sure not to kick anything. That should be good. Looks like I have good spacing. Get myself going with that too much of a break. Ooh, out of balance. Maybe you'll need two hands, then one hand. Just like that. But if you can, stick to just one hand. So, as 
five on either side. If that one hand post felt more challenging, more like our speed bump being more of a orange rank skill than our simple bolt being a white rank skill. So, we've talked about quite a few things and we've only got about 20 minutes left in our class today. So, real quick, you guys, there are a few tutorials I have to throw at you. I have to suggest. You have to watch these. Or both. Highly recommend. Okay? Tutorial number one, actually, is our precision jump tutorial. There's a second one I wanted to watch. Attached to that, that's number 39. That one is specifically precision up and precision down. Then, lastly, tutorial number 41 is going to be for your strides. So, those cover the three main skills that we covered in the start of class today. So, if you guys forgot or you're like, I want vaults and are only focused on those vaults, tutorials 1, number 39, and 41 will go over our precision jump, up and down and strides, our floor skills for today. Our vault skills for today so far have been simple vault and speed vault. Those are tutorials number 3 and number 47. Okay? So 3 and 47 for your simple vault, number 3, and 47 for your speed. The last two vaults we're going to talk about today, in the environment that we have, will be our most challenging part of our workout so far. And those are going to be our lazy and our dash. And most people don't have an opportunity to really replicate those in their home. So what we're going to do is practice the strength and, and the, the required uh, capability, really, that you'll need to do these movements. So, quick grab a few items. These are, for me, just blocks, lifted precision blocks. Your first item can be like a soft pillow. You'll want a single obstacle. Nice and low, nice and small. Your second two items, if you can get them to be about the same size as one another, this will be super helpful. And they should be strong. Sturdy enough to hold you up if you're weighing yourself or holding yourself on your hand. No, okay. One of those out to either side of you. I'm ready now to do my first part of our workout for our last two skills today. I'm gonna move this out of the way, off to the side, so I can talk about our L sit, because boy, how the L sits are great. I love them. They're challenging. And if you had to do an L sit on flat ground, it's even more challenging. It's significantly harder to see that I've even got myself in the lift off the ground. So it makes it way more difficult to practice what we're gonna practice. Having a place where I can elevate my hands helps me to practice my L sit. Coach, coach, that's really tough. Good, it is, it should be, it will be. We're gonna practice our L sit by practicing our lazy ball. So, we have that first obstacle that we had in front of us. What we're going to do is put both feet to one side of that little obstacle, that soft obstacle. I'm going to then lift my hips up off the ground, both my heels are down, and now my right foot being to this next to this obstacle, being the first leg next to it, I'm going to put that over the top and then follow with my left. Now I'm going to go left, right. And so you can see I'm holding myself up off the ground and I'm trying to quickly kick my legs one and then the other over my forward obstacle. Now there's way too many ways to cheat this. I can hold myself up and go one, two, sit, right? But now there's no point where I'm holding just me up without the assistance of my foot. And that's really our goal. No feet touching the ground at the same time is your goal. So when we get our first leg up and over that obstacle, we're gonna try and get our second leg to catch up right away. So we're going to be almost jumping off of the one leg and trying to get those feet to come together 
They don't have to land together. They can still land one and then the other. But our goal will be to do the leg swing practice for lazy ball. Woo. Now this is something you're going to feel a lot in your hands and wrists because you're holding yourself up. So take a seat, take a second, roll out. Okay? Now coach, coach, I'm not feeling it just in my wrists. I'm feeling it in my belly and my thighs. Good. Your lower abdomen and your upper quads are gonna be firing. There's nothing else to it. They're gonna hurt, they should. It's part of your workout. So, lift yourself up and get back into it. We're gonna try and do over and back as one. We're gonna do that, let's say 15 times together. And I'm sure you guys have been practicing these or have already started. So we're gonna start our count together from zero. Starting with me, my feet on the left side of the block, holding myself up, I'm gonna be lifting over back, that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and that's our 15. So, if that was tough, you're feeling you burn, you need to take a second. We get some water. That's because I'm a hot mess. And you invited me into your room. How silly. So, we're gonna go on ahead and talk about our L-sit just a little bit more. Practicing our lazy ball in this environment, having these three pieces, our, our lifters, our risers, whatever our risers may be. They may be a five gallon paint bucket. You may be holding down both of your little siblings and kicking your feet over your third, smaller sibling. I don't know. But using this setup, we're gonna practice our L sit. So if this was a small thing, squishy, cushy thing, like a pillow, that's great. Use the pillow. If it was something like your little brother's toy, probably don't do that, right? What we're going to do we start with our hands up on our risers and our feet up on here, on whatever our third riser is. Now it should be something that we can lift our feet up onto. Heels are up on top of it. My hands are gonna go up and onto the sides next to me. In order for this to work really, I'm gonna actually curl my hips backwards towards the couch behind me and then squeeze my thighs to try and lift my feet up off the, the block in front. So I'm gonna lift up here, curl here, try and lift my legs. And you can see that I slowly have slid backwards off of my forward riser, off that front. That's okay. It's because I'm really using my abs to pick myself up. I'm gonna go on ahead and lift myself back up and onto it again. And if I need to, readjust it. Putting it out a little bit further. I have long legs, so I need it out a little further for myself. Now I'm up and on it. I'm gonna curl my hips back, lift, Oh. And now I'm moving backwards. We're gonna readjust, put ourselves back on. And this is essentially a negative version of our l -sit, where we are taking a moment to hold ourselves up and then to set ourselves down without having to worry about lifting ourselves up. If that lift was hard to do and our legs helped us out a lot in our previous workout, this, this set down, should be enough of a workout to really get us going. Big lift up, curl your hips in, and squeeze those thighs. 
to try and lift up slightly. The reason why we're talking about squeezing the thighs to lift those legs up is because for those of you that want to challenge yourself, we're going to try and go up on top of that block or that pillow, that riser. So staying in a nice low squat or low seated position, I'm going to grab forward on the edge of this and curl my chest up and over my knees. I'm going to need to rock my whole body back a little bit so I can get my body to lift my feet up. So I'm gonna curl in and I grab and rock my whole body back a little to get my feet up. I rock into this upward position where I'm leaning back. That backwards lean becomes super important for a lot of our big dash faults that we end up doing. So that more advanced variation once more. My feet are next to my riser, not on top of it. I'm grabbing my forward edge of my hand risers. I'm going to curl in as I lift, having this tight squeeze in my abs to curl. I'm not just leaning forward, but I'm curling. I'm squeezing my abs and my thighs together. Then I'm going to rock back while staying in that squeeze position. I rock back. I lean the whole orientation of my body to get my feet up and over that block. So on, in, lift, rock, set those feet down. Woo! If your body falls apart when you do the rock, and you can't keep your legs lifted, you're not squeezing hard enough in that tight, in that squeeze, that first L sit position. So we're gonna do just a few more of those. Heels are on the floor, trying to get our heels up on top of our obstacle. Grab the hands on the edge, curl in, lift up, rock back, put the heels down. Squeeze, stay tight. Okay guys, now those are drills that you can make your own workouts with. If you want to challenge yourself, try and do the lift up. If you're still just, just working on it, try and do that set down. If you find that you're trying to get that lift up, and you're tired of or the set down is not enough for you, then practice the legs over with that lazy, where you can then delay and hold in the middle for as long as possible. Like leg up, leg catch, and hold. So this is the final part of our workout, kind of combining some of those previous bits. Starting here, hands on, heels down. We're gonna lift one leg, then the other, then set them down. And now I'm trying to exaggerate how slowly I'm doing that movement. And I am by no means some professional calisthenics league. Not all shredded like Coach Gabe. But I am able to get a slight pause. Whew. That slight pause is the moment where I'm really pushing myself, really gaining the strength that I'm gonna need for my dash balls. So we're gonna do a few more of that lazy vault drill we did before with the slight pause. We'll go back and over with a one second pause or a half second pause as best as we can. We're gonna go over and back five times only because we're taking it slow. So, hands on, legs are gonna kick up and over, slight pause. One. Two. Everybody understand? Now if you need to take a moment, shake out your wrists, stretch them, because we have done a lot of this press up, do so. But finish these five with those pauses. That's four, five. Oh my. Breathing is an important part of your workouts, guys. I find myself needing reminders, even as someone that's been doing workouts all the time, often. So, breathe in your nose and out your mouth. The last two vaults that we worked on are lazy in our dash. There's a couple more tutorials that I'm gonna throw at you guys. The lazy ball is our tutorial number 17, and our dash ball is tutorial 49. So like, there's a lot of tutorials. A lot of them. We've got like 65 plus tutorials. So many of them. And they cover all of our white and all of our orange. And they're constantly gonna be referred to 
out all of these following episodes. So if you've not yet filmed streams, take a chance, go watch some tutorials. If you missed an episode, then go watch a past episode. And if you really enjoy tricking, we're gonna have tricking later on tonight. And since we only release that once a week, watch the tricking episodes repeatedly and practice them or practice what you learned in that first episode without watching the second or a third time. Practice it two or three times that week. Okay guys, so if you haven't got water, now's a great chance. Otherwise, we're gonna get started and moving, cleaning our space, and doing our stretches for the end of the class today. Now, as we're clearing our space, I think it's important to note, you guys are a wonderful class. You never interrupt me, and I appreciate that. Thank you. From the bottom of my heart. Thank you. Now, we got a clear space. We're going to start with a butterfly, because I know, because my hips are feeling it. I know that your hips are feeling it too, too, doing those workouts. I did those workouts today too. So, our thighs are warm, to say the least. Our hips are mobilized, to be generous. They're probably tired, if we're being real, though. So, that's okay. If you find yourself exhausted, make yourself drink a little bit more water at the end. Hydrating the body is going to be a big trick to make sure that you keep your energy up. Especially because, well, I know it's only the middle of the day or early afternoon right now. If you guys are streaming this or watching this later on tonight, you want to stay hydrated before bed. And if it's the middle of the day, you probably still haven't drinking enough water. Like, everyone can just drink more water, honestly. So, there's your, there's your big fun note for the day. That was a great butterfly stretch. I'm going to put one leg out. I'm going to put my other leg up and over the top. My figure four position. As you guys can see, I'm gonna go on ahead and grab my toe and roll my ankle out. While I roll this ankle out, I'm gonna reach for my opposite foot, getting this nice extended reach and roll, like rock and roll, but with less soul. Sorry. Anybody that's in any of my actual classes knows I'm um, unfortunately prone to singing and not naturally trained or talented in that art form by any means. So, while we're here doing our stretches, I'm just waiting for questions. If you guys have them, ask them on the live stream. If you don't have them, then I did a good job being a coach, I guess. I taught you everything in today's lesson. You learned everything. And, uh, and you were like, wow, that was wonderful and well-informed. And, and if I had questions, I probably won't ask them here. I'll probably just go watch one of the tutorials. Because that is, a fair and valid point. It does break my heart just a little because there's no interaction. Make sure you've rolled this ankle in both directions. It is supposed to be a class that you don't interrupt me. I appreciate your patience. But I would like the connection. I think everybody's yearning for a little bit of talking to someone else now. It's been about a week, a little over a week. We've all been stuck in our homes. What does this guy even look like anymore? All right, switch legs. Pull it in super tight. Reach for your toe, roll your ankle. Do we have any questions, son? Nope. No questions? Nope. Guess nobody loves me. Do you have any questions for me? Me? Yeah. Oh, not really. No? <laughs> no. All right, but we are going to be having our tricking class stream later on tonight. So if you guys watch our stream today or you're gonna watch our stream later on, you're gonna hear me talking about a class that's already passed if you're watching it too late. So our tricking class streams on Fridays from six to seven p.m. It's gonna be a great time. I'm the host of our tricking stream, opposite direction for young world. Um, if you guys are interested in getting more flexibility or just gaining uh, a little bit of additional blood flow, every other day, then you can watch Coach Summer and her Acroflex stream. That stream is happening on Tuesdays and Thursdays from three to four, as well as Saturdays from nine to 10. So if you guys are interested, I would highly recommend that you watch the Acroflex series. 
aside from Afroflex, let's switch to our pike stretch. Feet together, toes point. Reach out to those legs as best as you can. Try not to hollow your body. Keep a strong spine and reach out. Aside from that, you guys just watched our parkour episode. It is a Friday. We stream on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays for parkour from three to four. You just watched episode number four. It was a wonderful time having you guys. We're all gonna do one last stretch together. It's gonna be our bridge stretch, so come on out of your pipe. Make sure that you place yourself nice and strong, that you have plenty of room. Get those feet in, close to your bum. Tuck in your shirt if you need to. Just make sure that you're not putting your belly all over the internet, because some people don't want that. Hands over your shoulders. Get your hand flat if you can. Get that heel pressed all the way down. And then we're gonna shoot ourselves up. Oh no, there's my belly. Oh well. We're gonna hold it for 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. Softly set ourselves down. Tuck and roll. And well, you guys check us out on another stream, another day, another time. Adiós.